Hey, you. Let's talk about the state of education in the midst of this uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So, um, yeah. there you go. Yeah, about the same. So, um, <clears throat> as some of you may know, uh, I spent the first part of my career uh, in education. Uh, I uh, was the director of the uh, multimedia lab at Virginia Tech, and I also was um, the co-founder for the Lab for Scientific Visual Analysis, and I also helped establish the uh, architecture lab at Virginia Tech. So uh, by the time I was uh, 25, 20, yeah, 25, 26, uh, I had uh, contributed to the development of three major university labs uh, and millions of dollars worth of engineering research going on. Uh, in the various facilities. So um, I also, during my time as director of the Multimedia Lab, <clears throat> I um, was able to um, uh, was able to assist with the Faculty Development Institute and help uh, faculty members learn how to use technology in the classroom. The, um, the great thing about uh, that whole process was it was all very new, the technology was new. And uh, we had 400 faculty and students uh, working on 150 projects in my lab. And uh, the faculty were developing content uh, on their own as well. And uh, so, you know, it was interesting. The, um, the way in which we were dealing with technology back then, uh, this is around, this is between 1988 and 1991 when the... Uh, lab first got started, and then uh, I was there until 1997, uh, overlapping with the start of the company in 1993 and 94. Uh, even though uh, we started the company in 93, uh, started hiring other employees in 94, and uh, continued working, I overlapped for a few years uh, so we could focus on hiring more employees. And uh, But the great thing about uh, education back then was that um, the time study that we had been doing uh, in, uh, in the work that I was doing for my PhD uh, in the area of human factors engineering, we were doing industrial time study analysis on the process in education. And about a third of the time was spent uh, with the professor writing stuff down on the board. About a third of the time was spent with the students head down, copying stuff all they, all they saw off the board onto their notes. And then, um, and then about a third of the time was spent for learning. So if you had an hour long class, uh, the time study was roughly even. You'd have about 20 minutes of the professor writing something on the board and 20 minutes for him waiting for people to copy stuff down and filling in the gaps in there. And then the rest of the time was spent um, really kind of focusing on the learning. And so part of the idea with using technology was that it was going to help transition more of the focus on the actual learning and interaction part, which I think was a really good idea uh, if, um, if it had worked. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, you know, what people are dealing with today is exactly the reality of, um, of what we're seeing out there, which is the fact that, um, you know, um, most teachers don't have a comprehensive enough understanding of the technology to really provide, uh, the kind of, of real enhanced, uh, experience, uh, either in the classroom or, or especially outside of the classroom. And I think that that's where, uh, we're seeing a lot of trouble uh, now that people are taking stuff remotely. Some teachers are better than others, period, regardless of that, whether that's in the classroom or not. But uh, certainly uh, the issue that I have is that uh, some teachers are just really bad in the classroom and they are really, really bad uh, when they're not in the classroom trying to teach remotely. So uh, I think that that's a, um, you know, that's an unfortunate byproduct of all that. And, uh, you know, in this age of uh, YouTube and uh, things like that, uh, it occurred to me that you take uh, professors like um, Jordan Peterson, and Jordan has done a really great job uh, both at Harvard and at Toronto in converting opportunities, uh, and uh, his content is out there everywhere, and uh, he's a phenomenal instructor, and so uh, I think that um, I think he has uh, a lot to offer. There are some other great instructors. And so, um, you know, I frankly think that, uh, you know, you hear about, you know, two or three sections of a class and everybody uh, teaching, um, you know, it's like, well, that class is full because the teacher can only teach 28 or 30 kids. And, and so you got to sign up for the person that is really horrible at teaching that. And, uh, you know, frankly, I think teachers should be paid 
uh, you know, and, and, and the technology should be used to facilitate uh, how people are going to be teaching uh, anyway. And I think that um, I, sh you know, people should be able to uh, get um, uh, as many students as they can teach and teach remotely. And I think they should be paid per student. And uh, so if you teach, you know, a thousand students or 10,000 students or a hundred thousand students, then, you know, I think that uh, there should be a way to make that make sense. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at new ways, new paradigms in education that, you know, I think will give uh, rise to something like that. So uh, it just, uh, an interesting uh, look at sort of the reality of all that right now, given where we're at technology-wise. Um, but um, I spent a you know good part of my um, a first part of my career uh, up until the time I was about thirty, uh, focusing on that. And when we started G three, uh, we were doing a lot of uh, interactive multimedia work for. Uh, textbook publishers and uh, McGraw Hill and Simon and Schuster Interactive and Prentice Hall Publishing and those guys. So um, you know, I think today we're seeing really the the end of uh, education as we know it. These universities have these large campuses and these large expensive buildings, and they make people get up out of bed and walk across campus in the freezing cold and snow, and uh, just to stand in a room with a teacher who's really barely qualified to be teaching it in the first place. So. Um, you know, I think we're going to find that there's going to be a sort of a new paradigm in education over the next 20 years. Uh, this lockdown is giving us a, uh, an opportunity to kind of see where we feel education will probably would be going here in the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, and I don't think anybody likes it. I don't think it's, you know, I know some people like, you know, attending class remotely and staying in their pajamas. I'm in my pajamas. So, you know, it's all good. But yeah, I think the reality is, is I think that, um, there's going to need to be uh, a better value proposition other than just the fact that, hey, I show up for class for four years and, uh, and this institution with lots of big expensive buildings is going to give me a diploma. You know, uh, I don't think that that's, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's reason enough anymore. Uh, you know, uh, you high school diploma and, and the college, uh, you know, bachelor's degree uh, is, is not really or shouldn't really be the point. Uh, of all this stuff. Uh, they're just kind of marking time. So I see that as being a very, uh, you know, this being a very telling way to kind of see how this goes. And uh, I just don't think that anybody's really all that into this being the reality of education for the next 30 years. So, um, and I, I think the, the universities are going to have to, you know, come to grips with the idea that maybe these really big campuses with lots of really expensive buildings has been a complete waste of time. I mean, you know, their thing is about building their balance sheet with real estate assets that are paid for. You know, I just, I, I'm not a real estate guy. I don't think that's a great way to go. And, um, you know, look at all the uh, housing uh, refunds that had to be issued for students that lived in the dorms. You know, <laughs> I bet those universities are hating life on that. You know, uh, I wish some of these universities you could buy the stock for. That would be great. Just watch their stocks just get destroyed. But um, anyway, that is uh, that is an interesting uh, look at the issue of education and uh, just the reality of what education has been like uh, since I started uh, really focusing on that heavily uh, in 1988. And um, so 30 plus years, 32 years uh, of uh, really kind of focusing on how education is evolving and it looks like um, we're going to need a, if this is a look at how how we thought we were going to evolve to, I think uh, everybody's probably looking for a little better model uh, than that and I don't blame them. So anyway, thanks for attending and uh, I appreciate uh, everybody showing up and uh, thanks a lot. Well, let's see here.